This segment is on the red blood cells. Red blood cells are the most abundant blood cells. They account for 99.9% .9 of the formed elements. They give whole blood its deep red color because they contain the red pigment hemoglobin. Hemoglobin binds to oxygen and carbon dioxide and carries them throughout the blood vessels. A red blood cell count is performed to report the number of red blood cells per microliter of whole blood. A single drop of whole blood contains approximately 260 billion red blood cells. The average adult has 25 trillion red blood cells accounting for roughly one-third of all cells in the human body. In adult males, a normal red blood cell count would contain 4.5 to 6.3 million red blood cells per microliter, whereas in a female, the count would be 4.2 to 5.5 million. The hematocrit is the percentage of a blood sample that consists of formed elements, mostly red blood cells. You determine the hematocrit by centrifuging a blood sample so that all the formed elements come out of suspension and congregate at the bottom of the sample. The top clear fluid is the plasma. Many conditions can affect hematocrit. For example, in dehydration, hematocrit would increase as the fluid in the plasma is decreased. Also, in erythropoiesis, where red blood cell production is increased, the hematocrit would increase. The red blood cell has a unique shape compared to other cells in the body. The thin central region and the thicker outer margin give it a large surface area to volume ratio. The red blood cell carries oxygen to the tissues, and the larger surface area to volume ratio allows a faster exchange of oxygen between the interior of the red blood cell and the plasma. This shape also allows red blood cells to form stacks, like dinner plates stacked up. These rows of red blood cells can then efficiently fit through the narrow lumen of the smallest blood vessels called capillaries. The red blood cells are able to change shape as they are squeezed through the capillaries because they are very flexible. Red blood cells of humans do not contain nuclei or ribosomes. As a result, red blood cells can't perform repairs of their own cell, and they end up living about 120 days. They have few organelles, so their energy demand is low. They have no mitochondria, so they have to obtain their energy through anaerobic metabolism. The primary purpose of the red blood cell is to transport respiratory gases such as oxygen and carbon dioxide throughout the body. Hemoglobin is a globular protein with a quaternary structure within the red blood cell that is responsible for the cell's ability to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide and accounts for 95% of its intracellular proteins. Hemoglobin is reported in grams of hemoglobin per deciliter. The normal ranges are 14 to 18 grams per deciliter in males and 12 to 16 grams per deciliter in females. Each hemoglobin contains heme that is a non-protein pigment complex. Each heme unit holds an iron ion. The iron will interact with oxygen and cause the blood to be bright red. The iron and oxygen can dissociate easily to release the oxygen at the tissues. When the iron does not have an oxygen molecule, it makes the blood a dark red, almost burgundy. Each red blood cell contains about 280 million hemoglobin molecules. Each hemoglobin molecule contains four heme units, so each red blood cell can potentially carry more than a billion molecules of oxygen at a time. About 98.5% of the oxygen carried by the blood travels through the bloodstream bound to hemoglobin inside the red blood cells. The amount of oxygen bound to hemoglobin depends on the oxygen content of the plasma. If oxygen levels are low, hemoglobin will release oxygen. If a person has a low red blood cell count, or a low hematocrit, or if each red blood cell has a low hemoglobin count, a disorder called anemia will result. This makes the individual weak, lethargic, and confused, and the organ functions will start to deteriorate due to oxygen starvation. Red blood cells undergo major mechanical stresses. The red blood cell travels from the heart through the peripheral tissues and back to the heart in less than a minute. In that time, the red blood cell is forcefully pushed out of the heart and forced through blood vessels, where it bumps into other cells and the walls of blood vessels. It stacks up with other red blood cells to fit into the narrow lumen of the capillaries. Then it is rushed back to the heart where it will be pumped out again. With no nucleus, there is no repair mechanism for the red blood cell. Instead, 
It only lives for 120 days and then either it ruptures or a phagocyte engulfs it as it starts to look worn down. New red blood cells are made and enter the bloodstream as fast as old ones are taken out of circulation. Macrophages in the liver, spleen, and bone marrow remove the hemoglobin molecules from the ruptured red blood cells. Once the hemoglobin is released from the red blood cell, it breaks apart. The hemoglobin contains iron, which is stripped off and converted to biliverdin, an organic compound with a green color. Bruises develop a green color due to biliverdin formation in the blood-filled tissues. The biliverdin is converted to bilirubin and released into the bloodstream where it will be bound to albumin and transported to the liver for excretion in the bile. The iron that is released can be toxic to the cells, so it too must be recycled. About 26 milligrams of iron will be incorporated into the new hemoglobin molecules each day. The rest of the iron will be bound to protein carriers and excreted at the kidneys and the digestive tract. To keep up with this form of iron, one must obtain iron in the diet by ingesting 1 to 2 milligrams per day. Too little iron can cause an iron deficiency anemia and too much iron can build up in the liver and cardiac tissues. Excessive iron deposition in the cardiac muscles has been linked to heart disease. Red blood cell formation is called erythropoiesis. This occurs only in red bone marrow, which is called myeloid tissue. The tissue is located in the vertebrae, in the sternum, the ribs, the skull, the scapula, the pelvis, and the proximal limb bones. Other marrow areas contain yellow bone marrow. Under extreme stimulation, such as lymphoma, the yellow bone marrow will convert to red bone marrow to increase red blood cell formation. Red blood cells pass through several stages as it matures. It starts off as a stem cell in the red bone marrow called a hemocytoblast, which is a multipotent stem cell. A multipotent stem cell has the ability to differentiate into several different cells. The hemocytoblasts will differentiate into myeloid stem cells and lymphoid stem cells. The myeloid stem cell will then differentiate into a proerythroblast, then to various erythroblast stages. After roughly four days, the erythroblast sheds its nucleus to become a reticulocyte. The reticulocyte contains 80% of the hemoglobin of a mature red blood cell. After 24 hours in circulation, the reticulocytes complete the maturation and become a mature red blood cell. For erythropoiesis to proceed normally, the red bone marrow must receive adequate supplies of amino acids, iron, and vitamins such as B12, B6, and folic acid. In order to absorb vitamin B12, a molecule called intrinsic factor, which is produced in the stomach, must be present. Erythropoiesis is stimulated directly by the hormone erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is produced in the kidney when oxygen concentrations are low. A low oxygen level in tissues is called hypoxia. Low oxygen can be caused from anemia, when low blood flow to the kidneys declines, when oxygen content of air in the lungs decline, such as high altitude, and when the respiratory surfaces of the lungs are damaged. Erythropoietin will stimulate the production and maturation of red blood cells. The ability to increase the rate of red blood cell formation quickly and dramatically is important to a person recovering from a severe blood loss. Athletes can practice blood doping to elevate their hematocrits by reinfusing packed red blood cells that were removed and stored at an earlier date. The goal is to improve oxygen delivery to the muscles and thus improve performance but it is dangerous because it elevates blood viscosity and increases the workload on the heart.